perfect. It's definitely gone a bit chilly. Got the coat on in the uh, in the workshop. I've started to give a bit of attention to putting some heating in the van. So I've decided to go for the ubiquitous Chinese diesel heater. No, it doesn't heat your diesel. It uses diesel to heat your heat air and heat the van. I looked at a variety of these. They all seem very similar. Um, the main choice thing seems to be between whether you get one that's a sort of a self-contained unit with a fuel tank in it or whether you get a separate fuel tank which takes a, quite a bit more fuel um, but has a small unit here. I decided to go for the self-contained unit. I know there might be a disadvantage on the amount of fuel you can put in long term but apart from putting one or two holes through the van and putting electricity to it it seems a much more simpler installation and I also had this mad thought that I might want to pull it out put a different exhaust on it and maybe use it in the uh, in the workshop uh, what is there to say about it it came unit all this is I have put some diesel in already and it didn't leak which I thought it probably would it has an exhaust exhaust pipe an air filter some wiring, some tubal clips, and a bit of aluminium hose and a couple of small aluminium hoses. Some for the air filter as it gets the air in and the other is for where it pushes the air out. It looks fairly simple. What I'm hoping to do is make it so that I only put the exhaust out of the van. So I only have to drill one big hole through. Also that's so that I can make it easier for putting it in and out. So I'm going to put it together, test it, see if it works okay, and then take the drill to the van. Well, to test it, I've connected the exhaust and pointed it out the door. I've connected the uh, air filter and although it's not a permanent connection that at the back I'm intending to run the air filter pretty much like that hanging out the back I'm now going to connect up a battery turn it on grab my fire extinguisher and see what happens that's it with power it tells me it's 13 degrees power 12 volts now I think if I click this, it should turn on. Maybe not. Right, no idea. I suppose I better read the instructions. I got out the instructions. None of them are actually this layout. Lots of different layouts. Maybe the remote might make more sense. But as the remote doesn't seem to have much on it other than one button, I'm loath to start playing with that. The thing I think it might be is I might have to do a longer press. So let's give that a go. It's come on. There's definitely air blowing through. Now I, tell you, I do believe it can take a while to burst into life. So let's give it a few minutes and see what happens. It seemed to start okay, ran it for a bit, turned it off, seems okay. Not yet, I can't find any information about this height and pump buttons on there. Uh, but the remote turned it off. Um, what I'm going to do now is turn it back on, leave it to run for 10 minutes or so and see what happens.
Come on, man. Plenty warm enough now. Now the fan speed or the pump speed, the ticking has definitely slowed down and the fan seems to be slowing down. It's been going what about four minutes. And it's set on H1. I've tested it for a while now, 10 minutes or so, on off, turned it on, turned it off, played about with it. It was a bit confusing at first because the book's got instructions for lots and lots of different controls, none of which seem relevant to this particular layout that's on here. However, there's only one twiddly knob and two push buttons, so can't be that much to it. Also, the control has more than one button that I thought. It's got an on and off. It's got a plus and a minus, and basically you have to hold the on for a second or two, it turns on. The off for a second or two, it turns off. What have I learned? Well, the pipe which I had through the uh, little uh, seat, the stainless steel, which I'm assuming it's stainless anyway, it might turn out not to be. Anyway, it's gone straw coloured. That implies, the straw colour says, it's about 200 degrees C. So it didn't actually char the wood on the seat. So, um, you know, it, just at sort of that temperature. When I put it in the van, when it goes through the floor, I'm definitely going to have some heat protection around the pipe. So I've learned that <coughs> it takes a, a while to fire up and a while to switch off. The heat settings, heat one to six, seem to be what controls the speed of the fuel pump once it's running and once it's gone up to temperature it blasts out some great heat it is a bit noisy noisier than i expected to be honest however that's in a you know open area it might be once you've got it in built into a cupboard in a van that you, you know you don't notice it as much um what else is to say it used hardly any fuel while i was doing the testing um, i mean i know that's meaningless but uh uh, it bodes well if the tank had emptied I'd have thought oh my god this is going to use a lot of fuel so I think that's about it now what I need to do I'm going to make it so that I've just got one hole going through the floor in the van and I've got the exhaust leading backwards underneath it's I've worked out where it's going to go it's somewhere near where my spare wheel is so i'm hoping to make it so that the exhaust doesn't interfere with the spare wheel at all um, which i think i can do it's been awkward because when i've been looking at places i might put it in the van there's something underneath there's the fuel tank or there's a frame rail or whatever so at the end of the day you do have to take that into account it's completely where the exhaust coming out it's coming out. You've got to decide that there's an appropriate place that that will fit in. And that would be true, whether it was this kind of unit or whether it was the separate one with the separate fuel tank. Where the exhaust comes out, you've got to have some clear space under the van and it does impact where you're gonna put it. Right, next thing is, I'm gonna drill a hole in the floor, put the exhaust in, clamp it in, and I should have heating in the van. Oh, sort out the electricity for it, but that shouldn't be too hard. So let's see how this all works out.
never thought it would go through that quickly. Put some fireproof lagging around the pipe where it goes through the floor and I held it on with some stainless steel ties. Now I rooted the exhaust so that it wouldn't touch against the tyre or the underside too badly and so that it was pointing towards the rear. Seems to be working fine. I used tech screws to bolt the base to the floor of the van so it doesn't move about. And the final thing I decided to do was to put some casing around it so that it wasn't as visible. I'd left plenty of ventilation around the bottom, which is actually hidden when the bed's in the van. At the front, I'm intending to put a plate so that I can actually move the control and put a pipe so that the vent actually comes out there. But I'm not going to do that until I've seen how it works for a, you know, a few times at least. I made the top of the unit removable so that you can fill the uh, diesel tank when you need to. And I'm also thinking about putting a shelf in there that's perhaps removable so I can put a diesel container on top. That is the heater in the van. I've used it a couple of times now and it's been absolutely excellent. I'm really pleased with it. If you enjoy these kind of videos or you want to see some of the other projects we're on, why not subscribe? But anyway, thank you very much for watching.